Public Library in beautiful Georgetown, Kentucky. And we've got another episode of Bookends for you. I know I promised you last time that we were going to have World War II fiction, but we've had a slight change of schedule because uh, one of my coworkers uh, challenged me. Because we are um, in Georgetown, they are celebrating their pride in September instead of June due to the pandemic. Uh, my coworker challenged me. She said, have you ever done a pride episode? And I said, no, I haven't. And she said, well, why don't you? And I said, okay. okay. So here we are with a, a bunch of really, really, really super awesome LGBTQ uh, related books of all kinds of yes. different genres. So there's something for everybody. Everyone. Yay. <laughs> and uh, one of my favorite genres, yes. It's great. so much fun. Yes. I know we've got, we've probably got some romances. We sure do. Because we that's sure do. one of our favorites. Yes. Uh, one of my favorite genres is uh, science fiction and fantasy. So I especially wanted to focus on that. And I found some really unique uh, books that I'd like to share with you. Our first one down here, it's a little novella, and it's called Fireheart Tiger by Alette de Bodard. And uh, it's about a princess, Princess Tan is learning to make her way as an adult in her mother's imperial court of Bin Hai. And uh, this, uh, apparently this novella takes place in a world where there are only women. No men are even spoken of, and it doesn't really explain why there are no men, but you just understand that in this, uh, in this fantasy novel, there are just only women. Uh, as a teen, Princess Tan, had been sent away as a royal hostage to the, coin, to the court of Efteria, where she met her first love, Efteria's Princess Eldris. And now, several years later, when she's back at her own home court, uh, Princess Eldris from Efteria wants to cement, cement diplomatic ties with Bin Hai and further her own political interests by marrying Princess Tan. And this match is improved by the Empress, her mother, but is the union in Bin Hai's or even Tan's best interests? Will Tan find the inner strength to pursue a course that will be beneficial to both her and her people? And will a supernatural force once unleashed in her youth in Epteria wreak havoc now in Bin Hai? It's fascinating. It, it's very, very, very good. Um, and there's a supernatural element. So I, I highly recommend it. It's a very short read. So check it out, Fireheart Tiger by Aliette de Bodard. My second book that I'd like to feature is called Cemetery Boys by Aidan Thomas. And I really super enjoyed this book. I, I'd, I'd actually heard a lot about it. Um, Yadriel is a young gay Latino trans man who is trying to find acceptance in his circle of close-knit, loving, but not quite understanding family. Coming from a long tradition of uh, brujas and brujos, uh, which are kind of like witches, um, whose work of healing and helping the dead uh, have been completely separated uh, by gender. So the, the brujas, the, the women, do one thing. They um, help heal people. And the brujos in this book uh, help the dead cross over if their spirit wants to remain here. And uh, Yadriel wants to take his place with the men of his family as a brujo, but his father, the leader of the brujos, will not allow it. So Yadriel, with the help of his cousin and best friend, Maritza, initiates himself into the tradition and locates the spirit of a young gay man, Julian, that has not crossed over. And Yadriel and Maritza try to help Julian so that Yadriel can prove himself to be a true brujo. And they solve a creepy missing persons mystery mm. in the process. So really check this one out. I the cover of that one too. The cover yeah. of that is spectacular. Yeah, it's really good. And it's, and it's got a lot of um, just fascinating uh, detail uh, about the, the spiritual traditions. It's very cool. All right, for your science fiction fans, we've got here a pale light in the black by KB Wagers. 
And this one is the rollicking first entry in a unique science fiction series that introduces the Near Earth Orbital Guard, or NEO-G for short, a military force patrolling and protecting the space, space around uh, our planets, uh, inspired by the real life mission of the U.S. Coast Guard. And it's, it's about um, the people that are stationed on this vessel, they compete in uh, a, a games every year, in, uh, annual boarding games, and their crew, which has almost won, like the previous years, they're really super good. Uh, they know they're going to win it this year, and then their crew gets kind of shuffled around because somebody gets promoted, and uh, so a new person joins, and they're like, great, we're just never going to win. But... Uh, <laughs> So they're, they're trying to adjust to the new person, uh, Maxine Carmichael, okay. who's brought aboard their ship, and uh, she's trying to learn her place. She comes from a, a family of very uh, high-achieving people, but they were Navy people, not uh, Neo-G people. So they're kind of disappointed in her career choice. Okay. So she, feels, she really feels she's got to prove herself. So will they win the games? And will they solve the mystery of uh, the floating derelict ship that they found with uh, missing? Uh, it's kind of like it was a it was a ship of people frozen in in time cryogenics. Cryogenics, yes. Kind of like it happened in Star Trek. Um, but those people were missing when they found the ship, so they didn't really know what happened to them. So figure out what happened to them, and uh, find out if they won the games. Read this book. Pale Light in the Black. Science fiction, cryogenics, mystery, mystery gaming, sounds and awesome. LGBT. That sounds amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Miss it. And then, another wonderful fantasy novel, my favorite. Uh, the Red Scrolls of Magic by Cassandra Clare and Wesley Chu. Now, I know you all have <laughs> read, you all have read the, Mor the Mortal Instruments series and the Infernal Devices. So this is by the same author. <laughs> You will love, if you love those, you will love the Eldest Curses series, of which this is book one. So uh, in this one, we find the immortal warlock Magnus Bane romancing the shadow hunter Alexander Lightwood. Well, it starts out as romantic getaway to Europe, <laughs> but something always manages to get in the way, like a lot of demons, demons. attacking them. <laughs> All the time. <laughs> Cassie's got to bring the demons. <laughs> yes, she's good at that. Uh, but that's what shadow hunters do. They destroy demons. Mm -hmm. So as a descendant of angelic beings, Alec is well versed in destroying demons. He doesn't know that his new boyfriend, Magnus, is actually the son of one of the most major demons in the universe. And Magnus doesn't quite know how to tell him without dampening that romance. That, that would do it. That would do it. <laughs> but anyway, the romance is interrupted when Magnus and Alec find themselves investigating the origins of a cult of demon worshippers with a grand finale meeting of Magnus's dear old and very estranged demonic dad. <laughs> Can nice guy Magnus, he throws a birthday party for his cat. That's how nice he is. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Uh, can he and Alec do away with the cult and banish Magnus's demon dad, and at last find romance together. Sounds great. Yes, and this is only the first. It sounds one. magical. Too. Yes, it it's magical. Good. There's lots of magic that goes on. Yes. So, true fantasy. Good. You will love it. Now, this one, this is a thriller. So, if you love thrillers, you will really want to read this one. It's called Razorblade Tears by S. A. Cosby. It's got a black father and a white father and two murdered sons and a quest for vengeance. Ike Randolph has been out of jail for 15 years with not so much as a speeding ticket and all that time, but he is a black man and a black man with cops at the door knows to be afraid. But the last thing he expects to hear is that his son Isaiah has been murdered along with Isaiah's white husband, Derek. Ike had never fully accepted his son's homosexuality, but he's devastated by his loss. 
And uh, Derek's father, Buddy Lee, was almost as ashamed of Derek for being gay as Derek was ashamed his father was a criminal. Buddy Lee still has contacts in the underworld, though, and he wants to know who killed his boy. So Ike and Buddy Lee, these two ex-cons with little else in common than a criminal past and a love for their dead sons, band together in their desperate desire for revenge. And this is their story. It's a story of bloody redemption, heartfelt change, provocative and fast-paced. So if you like thrillers, check it out. Sounds really, really does. Yeah. It's got lots of rap. Sounds yeah. Really I think we need some like lighthearted romances. I think so too. It sounds that way. <laughs> to, to lift our spirits after that one. <laughs> yes, I, I got you. I can okay. help with this. <laughs> so I wanted to first mention all the colors, the rainbow colors, of course. I've got it. I've got a ring representation. So I think that I've hit on all of the colors here with my array of rainbow books of the red for life, orange for healing, We've got green for prosperity, blue for serenity, violet for spirit, black and brown for people of color, and white, blue, and pink for the trans community. So I'm pretty sure that, that I have hit on all of the rainbow colors here, along with wearing my rainbow. Yay! So, um, all right, let's see. First off, we're going to start with this book. It is called One Last Stop by Casey McQuiston. Many of you might remember her as the author of Red, White, and Royal Blue, which was one of the biggest hits, I believe, of 2020. Um, so this book is actually, um, it can be read as a standalone, or you can read that one first, whatever you want to do. This book is actually a sapphic romance. Um, it's between a woman displaced from the 1970s who's actually stuck on a subway, and then a new arrival to New York City who has just arrived in New York City to try to find her place in the world. Um, it's a LGBTQ contemporary romance, but it's so much more. It's a book about a group of ragtag misfits um, finding family and actually solving a mystery, too. So we've got romance and mystery. Um, it's got a peculiar plot, a queer love story, and an us-against-the-world mentality. Um, the history of Jane, who they nicknamed Subway Girl, and her life is fascinating with insights into a lot of the historical queer happenings, especially across the U.S. in the 70s. Um, there's also some politics and race mentioned. It's one part romance and one part love story um, and love letter to New York with time traveling, time traveling lesbians stuck on a subway. <laughs> a quirky cast of characters and it takes you on a ride in this really feel good story. Um, it's a must read for fans of Red, White, and Royal Blue with a message that love transcends even time. So highly recommend this one. I was just super adorable. I laughed out loud a lot. Um, okay, moving on. This one, the cover, I just adore the cover on this one, is called Honey Girl by Morgan Rogers. Um, so this is about a, a girl named Grace Porter, um, and she's very relatable. She's just a down-to-earth, down-home relatable character. Um, she meets someone called Yuki Yamamoto, and at the end of the book, everyone is wishing that they could find their female companion or their companion and partner in life, their own Yuki Yamamoto. So she goes to Vegas um, kind of to have a little break from her Ph.D. studies and all that and wakes up in a hotel room finding out she's married to a woman. She has no memory of this. So the story ensues, and she has to kind of get to know Yuki Yamamoto and figure out where they're going to go from here. And along the way, um, they just build on their human connection between themselves, their family. They learn about life struggles. Um, they learn about love. Um, I would basically say it's a book about broken, lonely people trying to put themselves back together. Um, and it's the, the way Morgan Rogers paints these scenes of, of the Las Vegas and New York, it's just, it's just absolutely fabulous. So they're adorable together. Um, they're a little awkward, which some of us can relate to, but they're super adorable. Um, it is also blurbed by Christina Lauren. Um, the author's Christina Lauren, and I see a lot of similarities too. So if you like Christina Lauren, I think you might really like this one as well. And then this one, and this one is called Out of Character. It is book two in the True Colors series by Annabelle Albert. So I recommended this one last year, or in February. Uh, I recommended Conventionally Yours, which is book one. Mm -hmm. This is book two, um, and this is about uh, two of the other geek gamer boys in the series. Um, they are childhood friends to enemies to lovers. Um, it draws heavily on coming of age themes and self-acceptance. It's about Jasper and Milo. Um, and they're happily ever after. Their HEA is hard won. They have to kind of fight to get there. And um, so one of the boys actually accidentally gets rid of his brother's um, Odyssey gaming cards, which are worth a fortune. So he actually asks for the other boy, Jasper's help in getting the cards back. So it's about their adventures across all of the Odyssey gaming world across country. And they have comedy. And it's just lovely and heartfelt. And it's, it's just it's vibrant characters. And it's just 
a lot of laugh out loud moments in this one as well. Super cute. I'm going to have to read that one. Yes. I suggest, yes, it's wonderful. I think you like the conventionally yes, as well. Yeah, the gaming yeah. reference in this is just wonderful. Yeah. Um, and then I have a memoir, which actually is a little bit out of, my, out of my zone. I don't usually read memoirs, but this one, fabulous. It's one of the best I've ever read. It is called How Y'all Doing? Misadventures and Mischief from a Life Well Lived by Leslie Jordan. And some of you might recognize him on the cover. So he is an American actor, writer, and viral sensation. He's also a singer. Um, I'm sure he's great at it, but he really loves to do it, so we'll take it. <laughs> he's best known for his roles as Lonnie Gar in Hearts of Fire, um, Leslie in Will and Grace, and several other characters like in the American Horror Story franchise. Mm -hmm. um, he's currently actually, you can currently actually catch him in Fox's new show, Call Me Cat. Um, and he's just, he's great in that. He's one of the employees at the, the Cat Cafe. Um, so there are several characters in here, and he just talks about people such as um, Dolly Parton, uh, Debbie Reynolds. He talks about traveling, ponies, Broadway shows, gay bar brawls. It's just this will having you having you laugh out loud. Um, I listened to the audiobook of this as I read along in the book, and I I laughed so I had tears coming out of my eyes. It was it was just fabulous. So um, he is just um, a quirky Southern guy. He just told this wonderful story. So. Uh, if you're looking for a good, quick, short memoir that will have you just laughing out loud a whole lot, this is this is definitely one for you. Wow. And then I have one more focus. This one is actually a graphic novel. Now, it is a young adult graphic novel, but the, the topics are heavy and hard-hitting and wonderful. So this one is called Bingo Love. I'll hold it up. It was voted one of the advocates' best LGBTQ graphic novels of the year. Um, the year it was published. I believe it was 2018. So this is a beautiful story about a couple who've loved each other since they were young. I think they were in their 30s. And due to societal disapproval and family disapproval, they kind of had to back off of that love and go ahead and, and go on with their lives. They ended up both actually marrying men um, and having families and then later on meeting back up in life. Um, they originally met at church at a bingo group in 1963. This is Hazel and Mari. Um, they end up marrying men, like I said, decades later, they reunite in their 60s, and sparks wow. fly even when they're in their 60s. It's, it's just adorable. The art and illustration in this book is absolutely colorful and stunning, and there's just a lot about the friends and, and life and game of bingo. Um, it's empowering, refreshing, the represent, representation of diverse. Um, we've got uh, women of color in here. We've got just a lot of, uh, of friends of color and different, different orientations, and it's just... It's wonderful, and I tell you what was really nice about this was a lot of the queer stories that we see usually are people in their 30s and things like that. This this was talking about things that happened later on in life. Um, like, there's no age limit. So right. it was right. wonderful to read about. Um, and in that, it doesn't shy away from the realities of family expectations, relationship issues, body positivity, um, and the health problems that can develop in, in age as well. Um, and the um, it really, really helped address the attitudes, especially towards the queer community, especially from the 60s. Um, it's a beautiful, memorable, uh, diverse, heartfelt um, graphic novel and so much more. So check it out. Wow. Really great. So those are my colorful rainbow recommendation of books. Yay. <laughs> <We're right on. laughs> yeah. So, I've had a great time going through these. Yes. And uh, so support Pride. Yes. Read <laughs> all of them. Read all of them. Yes. Yes. And, and we'll see you Fabulous. next time. Great. Uh, when we when we absolutely will have World War II fiction. Yes. Yes. Exciting. Okay. Great. Thank you. Bye. Thanks. Bye.